Hi, uh, it's Grandpa Butler here. Uh, we're going to do a picture of a hiker up in the Rocky Mountains. And I started off by doing a light pencil sketch and then putting him in with some permanent uh, ink markers. Uh, these ones here, uh, kind of outlines of a few trees. Left penciled in mountains here and some other greenery in the foreground. So what I'm going to do on this is uh, work from the sky down. This is called Sky Blue and we're going to uh, start with it and while we're waiting for Grandpa to get ready here we'll dip some brush in and get it ready. So I'll follow the ridge here on the mountains here with my crayons. These are watercolor crayons. We've been recording our uh, use of them in these videos since uh, since September 2021 uh, when one of my daughter-in-laws suggested it might be fun for our grandkids to have this around if they were ever interested in doing this as a resource. So uh, that's what we're doing and uh, I think what we're going to start doing is putting these uh, original pictures up for sale on my grandpa Butler Art Etsy side, Etsy site. So let's see, so we just got that in there. We'll dip our water brush in here and what we're going to do is we're going to take that sky blue and kind of get some of the uh, uh, blue blue pigment here uh, dissolved in here. So I think that's enough here. We're just doing this for having fun, different kinds of things. So I've got a little bit of white paint here and we're going to dip it in and make some clouds here and there along here. And I think that's probably okay. And then uh, what we're going to do is uh, do the mountains here and come and do the trees. But before we do all that, so that Grandpa doesn't forget where he's painting, let's get some rocks colored. So here's some pre crayons. We're going to uh, do the trail here with the cinnamon. Do this rocks here, the sunny side, upside parts with this uh, golden ochre color and the downside parts with the uh, crimson color in there and then uh, and then we'll color all them to so that those will be set to work our way down okay so we've colored some of it uh, a lot of the pigment here we actually want to leave in place and to give it the rocks a little bit of structure here and uh, it'll be more especially true of the trees as we go along here and uh, some of it will want to merge colors together so this is always experiments each video we always do something a little bit different from the prior video uh, those are fun colors and uh, I like them a lot. Even if my hand is catching on the tape here on the bottom of my hand. Okay. Okay, so I think I think we've got most of kind of the rock in place. And uh, so it'll be easier to kind of smudge in the green around it once of all of the ochre and the reds in here are kind of dry here let's do the trails and the trails with crayons here it's going to be like drawing only we're just drawing with crayons and uh, and what we're doing here is we're 
down here where we want more details, we're going to do more horizontal strikes and uh, strokes with the with our pen, and we're going to then let those horizontal strokes remain, and here and there maybe think of a bit of a rock or something, and denote that by occasional touches of pens. Then get our brush, dip it here, and now we get in our little uh, trail here. Now, we don't want to get all, mix all these colors and for, except for sky sometimes, and for some situations where we have oceans and lakes. Uh, here, we're leaving some of the pigment behind as part of the interesting part of the picture here. For the mountains right here, we're going to try a royal blue and a kind of pink color here. The pink is sort of just to indicate some coloring here in the rocks. I'll just put in a few st stripes here and there, pink going down uh, in there largely. I think it will disappear and we'll have some mountain in there, whether we intended that originally or not. The blues here uh, we find that different kinds of blues work well for mountains. My, what I seem to, to do that works particularly well is I should look at the photograph I'm working on. But So cliffy areas will be these uh, vertical strokes here. And otherwise we'll have triangles here that are connected together and horizontal strokes. I think here we're not going to worry about snow fields. This is later in the summer when we come off there. And uh, this pink again, I, I expect to largely disappear when we start working our, our crayons across it here. Let's come this way. But we're, we're giving some shape to the mountain here by drawing with our crayons and some of these are ridges and some are kind of cliffy areas so this is areas coming down here and up here okay so let's see how that works we're going to dip our brush clean it here and we'll start up here and what we'll do is we'll try and leave some whites and places for lighter colors for our, our trees where they're in the sunlight. And, and maybe in between here we'll touch it up here. I'm trying to not use all the pigment up here, uh, dissolve it all, as you can see. But leave some of it around here and hoping so stroking like I drew here where I have these kinds of ridges and stuff in line here's a very steep place for example here's a slope down here a dip kind of steep places up here and sloping along there so one of the reasons that we do pencil and uh, pencil and our other colors in here is so that we know where to stop dragging color from our mountains and leave some space for the trees. So uh, you can see how we're doing that on this picture. So on the trees now, coming down here, you can use a lot of shades of green. So this is a kind of darker blue-green here, and I'll do this here at the distant trees and occasionally a line going up and down following the trunk, but that's kind of the shadowy area. And these are bushes right here. I intended them at least to be bushes. This is a shadow 
the area of these trees. That's a technical artistic term that I'm sure I would have learned in the art classes that I took, all of them, if I've taken any. Uh, and I did take one kind of fun one once. Um, we never used crayons, watercolor crayons. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, okay, so there's some of our darker colors, and we'll put some darker colors just above our stones here. Help give them some contrast when we get there, and here and there, along here. So we may come back, but that's our darkest generally. And what we're going to do is we're going to do lines up and down on these tree-like figures here. And coming down on the trees, uh, we've been using this dark green most recently, you know, regular green and a light green coming. So let's just put a few touches of the light green here and there, just so Grandpa doesn't forget to do that, you know, how Grandpas are sometimes. So we'll just come up here with those. And so far we haven't had much shadow, probably up and from the left. So we'll have the shadows this way. Okay. And so we'll have the lighter parts of the green trees to the left of the trees. Okay, so let's and that was, and the darker parts on the other side here. So I'm sure we're going to use that in the, in the meadows and stuff we still have to come to. Now, again, I am using the crayons just like I used, like I use a pencil and do swirls, lines around here. And then in the foreground here, I want these to be bushes, so why don't I make those green? There's a meadow in there. And I don't think we need much green in there. A little darker on the left side, though I'm not obviously greatly concerned about that. Uh, darker left, lighter on the right. And coming over on these trees here. So what I think we ought to do, I think we're at a place where maybe we ought to get these bushes and these trees kind of aced in here with our water here. And see what it looks like. So this is a tree that's pretty asymmetric. That is not quite the normal balanced look of the trees. And that's something that, you know, if you don't do accidentally like Grandpa does all the time, uh, you should try and do it on purpose. The asymmetry helps a lot, I think. The other thing you'll know, notice is that uh, Grandpa has a little bit of neuropathy in his hands. So be shaking. He finds this not only relaxing, but he finds this kind of working with crayons like this uh, therapeutic and quite feasible. Okay, so isn't that kind of fun? You light it up like that. Notice that Grandpa is certainly not always coloring just between the lines. Uh, he likes to the stroke and see these colors form and blend a little bit together into interesting other shades without uh, all becoming simply grays because everything's. So in that regard, Grandpa's found it quite useful many times to, to, uh, to dabble rather than brush back and forth, I mean, dab up and down, like so, rather than stroke. Now along this 
rock ridge here he's stroked along the edge a little bit, but other than that, he's kind of dabbled here and there. Okay. Okay, for the distant meadow, I'm going to use a little darker shade of ochre here. And uh, then we're going to have uh, grass, that grassy meadow, be a little greener. Mostly this light green as we move forward. And, uh, and with some uh, bits of, of vegetation, as indicated by this uh, green cran, cran that I'm, I'm wrapping here. Okay, distant meadows, a few horizontal strokes up in there. And then we begin coming in here. Grandpa's got to remember his creek beds there. But again, I, I'm thinking this is sloping down to the creek bed. So I want to draw my crans and, and not dissolve it. The, the pigments altogether. I'll leave that as a reminder that that's how it's sloping. Let's see how well that works out here. Okay, and come up here. But what we also want is we want bits of darker green here and there where we have vegetation, different kinds of vegetation growing up. This is a tree here. I guess Grandpa intends to save it towards the last, along with the hiker and the water and the creek, which is this area right here. And so now we'll do green coming down here. Oh, I think that's supposed to be a stone. Okay, so Grandpa's got to get out his stone stuff and with that and you put a little bit of green in that metal there little bits of green for gobs of grass and other things other kinds of plants that are growing along here sunflowers maybe uh, there's so many beautiful plants in nature okay before grandpa gets Let's get those rocks colored there on the stream. So we go. So these I meant to be rocks here, here, and here. And again, a little, a little red there. You know, Grandpa's going to get his uh, water brush and just stroke all these things in the same way he did it. Uh, I guess you should. Watch some of the stroking, but not all of it. See how I'm kind of not dab, it's a dab stroke. How's that? Uh, I should, I should uh, patent that so that one comes a really important word in public discourse. No one can use it without my permission. I think my thesis advisor tried to do that with the articles, A and the but he didn't quite succeed. Uh, so, and, and so on. Now we have bits of trees here and there. Let's just add a little bit of green on them for the, these are kind of baby trees sitting here. This one's not so baby. A teenager, uh, and it's an evergreen, but it's a rebellious evergreen. It's, it's a teenager, right? so it's over here, going its own way in its own kind of path here. Okay, just put a few. A little bit, a few dabs of red here, kind of like red for the hand, exposed hands and face here for our intrepid hiking person here. And then what we want to do is get some, choose some colors for the stream bed. 
Now for the stream bed, we're going to use this brown here, just a regular brown, in the places where the stream is, is sort of uh, not exposed to the sky for reflection periods. Uh, so right where this rock is right here. And the rest of the stream will kind of use this blue here. It doesn't, different streams have different qualities. And here we're using the same blue as we had basically in the sky. And now we'll touch that up. Before Grandpa forgets again, uh, let's do some shadows here. Again, well, potentially forgets. So let's, the light's coming here from the uh, upper left. So let's have this tree shadow here and maybe a few other things here. Shadows coming over here. Shadow of the rock coming over here and uphill kind of uphill here, the hiker standing up, and here's his backpack showing up here, and uh, coming up like that and like that. Okay, so that's about this rock here. Down the hill, down the hill, down the hill, down the hill. And 
just put some a little dark here on these trees. How long the shadows are depends on the slope, how far back they are away from the thing. So we're not going to worry about any of those things in a sort of calculative sense. Uh, we're just going to make some rough guesses and come here. So I think uh, and the blue line at the bottom of these trees a reminder of those shadows in between these two rocks there. Okay. So Grandpa's going to get his thing and I'll just touch up the blue right there. 